Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. The Linux Mint project threw us a curveball today. They have released Linux Mint 18.3. It is out of beta. My original information said that it would be available in mid to late December, but I guess they've decided that it's been beta long enough and so let's go ahead and jump into doing an in-place upgrade from Linux Mint 18.2. I have already covered how to do an in-place upgrade from an older distribution of Linux Mint. If you happen to be running on 17.3, 18, or 18.1, you might want to go with the last video I posted. But today we're actually going to try the upgrade. We're going to follow the directions that Linux Mint has posted on their blog, and we're going to find out how it works. And we're going to find out together. I mean, as soon as I found out about this myself, I said, let's just go do it and see what happens. It says, it is now possible to upgrade the Linux Mint Cinnamon and Mate editions of Linux Mint 18, 18.1, and 18.2 to version 18.3. So even if you are running 18 or 18.2, you can do it this way. That's awesome. Uh, we got upgrades for the XFCE and KDE editions will be available later this year. So I guess those editions are going to be in mid to late December. So the first thing that it's going to ask us to do is create a system snapshot, which means that we will need to install TimeShift, which they have backported. So let's go over here and do that real quick. I have a virtual machine up and running with Linux Mint 18.2, and this is going to be our guinea pig for upgrading. So the first thing that we need to do is grab the updates. Haven't done this yet. And you will see that when this pops up, you're going to see upgrade info. There's two packages in there that show up in your updates, and this is how you're going to know that you can go ahead and upgrade to 18.3. So there it is right there, the Mint Upgrade Info. So let's go ahead and install that. Update. And it's a very small package, so it should only take a couple of seconds. So we're going to do this live. We're going to pretty much stick with it uh, and just kind of roll along with it here. I will pause the video when it gets into things that will take a long time to do. Okay, so that's all done. So let's check and see if we have the option. There it is right there. That's the option. But before we do that, what we want to do is go ahead and install TimeShift and take a snapshot because they say to do it. I've covered TimeShift in a couple of videos so far. This is a new feature in Linux Mint that will allow users to take snapshots of the operating system and roll back sort of like the windows restore feature it's a, a new thing in mint time shift has actually been around for quite some time but it's now incorporated with linux mint so the first thing they want us to do is sudo apt update just to make sure that we have up-to-date mirrors well we just did that when we did the updates but i'm following their directions. Okay, everything's all up to date. sudo apt install time shift. Time shift is not a large application. It should only take a couple of seconds to actually install, so that is done. So we can leave our terminal open and we can go to a menu and make sure that it did install. And it is there. And we just go through the setup. We're going to do rsync backups because we're not running ButterFS. Next, uh, it's going to go and it's going to look at the system. This is a virtual machine with a very tiny little hard drive in it. So it's going to come up and say that it's probably got about 8 or 9 gigabytes of space to play with. I'll go ahead and do this. But if you have a very small hard drive on your system for whatever reason, I would not recommend installing or running TimeShift. You have to have a little bit of space to work with. We only have one partition, so this is the one that we're going to choose. Next. And while we're here, we can go ahead and set this up. Let me show you what I've been doing uh, on my machines that are already running Linux Mint 18.3. I have been setting up one monthly, and then weekly, I'm having it keep two. So we'll have snapshots going back two weeks. And then daily, 
I'm doing three. So you'll have the last three days, a week ago and a month ago, always on your system. And that way uh, you can choose from those. So we'll go ahead and finish. And of course, it's not going to do that until the time goes by. What we're going to do is we'll do an on-demand one here. And this may actually take it a few minutes to do because it's going to be copying lots of files. So I'll pause the video until it completes. That took it a few minutes to get done. So there's our snapshot in place. And I'm going to go ahead and add a comment on it. And I'm just going to put in B4 upgrade. So we know what it is. OK, close time shift. And then we will go ahead and close the terminal as well. Probably a good idea to have all the applications closed before we start doing this. And prepare for the upgrade. It says disable your screensaver. Well, I already have mine disabled uh, in the virtual machine. If you installed cinnamon spices, applets, desklets, extensions, themes, upgrade them from the system settings. Upgrade the operating system next. I didn't install much of anything except for the weather report. So I'm not going to bother with that in the video. And it says, upgrading to Linux Mint 18.3 is relatively easy. If the update in the update manager, click on the refresh button to check for any new version of Mint update and Mint upgrade info. If there are updates for these packages, apply them. Done. Launch the system upgrade by clicking the edit Upgrade to Linux Mint 18.3 Sylvia. We will do that. Follow the instructions on the screen. If asked whether to keep or replace configuration files, choose to replace them. Once the upgrade is finished, reboot your computer. Uh, commonly asked questions. We'll go ahead and take care of this before we get into the upgrade. Although Linux Mint 18.3 features a newer kernel, this upgrade does not change the kernel on your behalf. This is a decision only you can take. Same goes for the choice of display manager or the software selection. Applications won't be removed or switched on your behalf. You can decide to make these changes, but you certainly don't have to. After the upgrade, you can install newly introduced applications such as Redshift, GTK, and Mint Report from the repositories. If you are running Cinnamon or Mate and the upgrade is not available to you, Check that you have the latest versions of Mint Update and Mint Upgrade Info in, installed. If the latest versions are not yet available, uh, in your mirrors, switch to the default repositories. This happens rarely, but if you ever get if you ever get locked and were unable to log back in, switch to console with Control plus Alternate plus F1. Log in and type "Kill All Cinnamon Screensaver." or kill Mate screensaver in Mate, and then use control alternate F7 or control alternate F8 to get back to your session. Yep, that's a, I've seen that happen before for other reasons, so that is something that could possibly happen and good information from the Mint folks. Okay, I think we've got a pretty clear idea of what we're going to do, so let's jump over here and do it. So we have nothing else running. Well, I don't have the weather update, uh, weather applet on this one. I've got it on my other desktop. I thought I had it installed here. So we don't have anything like that to worry about at all. Go to edit. And then we go and open up the upgrade. So we will click next. We understand. Next. Next. Yes, I understand. Upgrades can be a bit risky, but usually in the case of Mini Linux Mint, it's never really a problem. So we'll give it the permission to proceed, and now it is going to be downloading the package information and changing things up here. So we'll just see how this goes. Stick with it for just a little while and see if we have to put any input into the system. I don't think there's a huge amount of differences in the packages uh, that are available for the, uh, you know, from 18.2 to 
Maybe we'll get some kind of idea here. Well, it's not showing. Well, it's now showing an ETA. Okay, so it says it's going to take six minutes. Let's go ahead and pause this. And I'm just going to let it rock and roll. And if anything changes, uh, you know, there's anything pops up on the screen that we need to interact with, I will uh, show you. Okay, we got something popping up on the screen here to take a look at. It's asking us where we want to install the boot loader. And we definitely want to put it on the device itself. So let's double check this. Yep, that would be the right choice. And we'll move forward. Now, if you, for some reason, installed your system in a different way, and you opted to put your bootloader somewhere else, that then that box may pop up and you need to make sure that you put it in the right place or you won't boot. But for a standard Linux Mint install, which is what this is, just make sure it goes on the device itself. It looks like we're about done with the major part of the upgrade here. So we'll stick with it and see what it does. Didn't take it quite that, you know, quite as long as you'd think an upgrade would take. These changes are, are, are you know they've already been uh, updating the system as we rolled along here so the the updates uh, to move from 18.2 a fully updated system to 18.3 it's not that much okay we're done so it says to reboot the computer so let us do that now we're going to reboot and when we restart we should be in Linux Mint 18.3, Sylvia. And once we verify that we have moved forward, uh, then I think what I'm going to do at the end of this video here is uh, open up Time Shift and restore us back to 18.2 and see how that works. So while we're waiting for this to boot up on the new system, you're probably asking yourself the question, should I go ahead and upgrade? Well, if you are extremely happy with Linux Mint 18, 18.1, or 18.2, you can stick with what you got. You could add Time Shift, which is really the major feature that's coming along with 18.3. If you're not interested in using flat packs, if you're not interested in using uh, the online accounts, from the GNOME desktop. If those sorts of things are not something that you need, then maybe you ought to stay right where you are. But if you want the latest and greatest, you can certainly move up here. Let's see, I want to get to software sources, because that'll tell us that we've changed. Our mirrors were successfully moved over. And so we're going to have to reset our mirrors. It does say that we're on 18.3 Sylvia. So we can go ahead and do that if we want to. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I'm going to do this one at least. Well, why not? We'll go ahead and finish. Just do it. I know that I'm getting ready to blow all this out, so <laughs> that's why I'm saying, why should I bother doing this? But we'll go through the motions anyway and go ahead and apply. Okay, so we'll update the cache. And I probably... Let's see how thoroughly it does it. I mean, because once we do this and we're on the 18.3 mirrors, it would be kind of interesting to see if we have any updates appear in the system. And I would almost bet that we do because if you have chosen to update everything when you set up your update manager, you know, it gives you three choices, and you might be offered uh, the ability to update to that newer kernel. Because that seemed to be what happened when we went from 18.1 to 18.2 is that yeah it went ahead and it said oh do you want to go ahead and upgrade so let we can check that and see whether it's going to do that and yes we have two packages here that are going to be upgraded too so actually let me go ahead and refresh refresh that make sure that that's all we're getting And we can go ahead and install the stuff.
Okay. So we're on Linux Mint 18.3, and for whatever reason you don't like it, you want to go back to 18.2. Well, if you used Time Shift, we can do that. So we're going to do that now. Go to Time Shift. And then we choose our update. Just highlight it. And then click Restore. And it's going to ask us what devices we're going to be using. And we're going to keep that all the same. And we're just going to do it. So it kind of turns off the desktop and it's going to do that. And then when it gets through, it's going to automatically reboot itself. And we should be on 18.2. So this should take about as long as it took us to back up the system a little while ago. So I'll go ahead and pause the video. And after it reboots, we'll boot back in and see if we're back on 18.2. Okay, I've been watching it restore a lot of files. We should be getting pretty close to the end. And now it is rebooting. And when we reboot, we should be back on Linux Mint 18.2, assuming that all went the way it was supposed to. It says 18.2 there. <laughs> Log back in and check and see. Open up our software sources. And we're back to where we started from. We're on Linux Mint 18.2 Sonya. So we have gone through an in-place upgrade following the Linux Mint blog's instructions. I will post those in the description to the video. And that was successful, seemed to work okay. And then we rolled ourselves back because we had time shift to let us do that. So pretty cool. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it's helpful. Good luck on your upgrades out there. And I guess we will talk again soon. Lots of stuff to talk about in Linux Mint 18.3. I want to do a separate video about time shift and run through the features. I know I've looked, through, looked at it so far in other videos, but that really deserves a video of its own. And uh, in the meantime, be sure and check out Easy Linux on Facebook, check out Easy Linux on the web, and also check out freedompenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux. I'm out.